Hello guys, this is IDQ and in this video we'll go over some tips and things to improve, 10 or more, let's try. If you like this type of content, go to GamersClass.com for just $9.99 a month, watch masterclasses with pro players, join exclusive live sessions and get 24-7 access to coaches and other high MMR players. Get full control of your rank games and start owning with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. So, as you can see, this is sort of the first thing that I want to talk about instead of queuing first game we should warm up so this is sort of one thing that i can do uh for warm up i try to dodge with manta x call magnus rp stuff like that so yeah as you can see i can do it like 100 percent of the time it's very very easy for me to do actually and a lot more stuff right like rp gleams you know stuff like that any spell that you can dodge with manta fisher a lot of spells so instead of um uh, instantly queuing what we should be doing is actually practicing something or watching a video about something that you want to try to do and stuff like that uh for example a replay you know a replay that you have played that you think could have played better or even live pops or stuff like that you know or even tournament games that you want to like check up on or something like that it's obviously a really nice thing <laughs> instead of um thinking that oh i'm wasting time i'm not practicing i'm not playing you should be thinking about this sort of like stretching right if you want to do an exercise or something like that run go for a run or something you should also just stretch you know so your body gets warmed up it's sort of the same thing you can actually even uh practice less hitting or anything that might interest you instead of just going straight into the game without being mentally connected to the game so yeah, that would be the first uh, first thing that I would advise you guys to do. The second thing that I would like uh, for you guys to try and do would be to actually understand and you know actually think about the patches that we're playing in and what the changes of it matters. Because obviously, let's go random one. As you can see right here, Berserker Skull cooldown increased from 14 to blah blah. So it got increased. This doesn't only affect X, it only af it also affects the game that it is picked in, the X. And let's say this one, Shard Proc, it doesn't really matter. It's not just about the hero, it also affects the hero's matchups and stuff like that. So, any hero that wouldn't really like to be called is now better versus X. So for example, a Morphling. Morphling is kind of trash versus X, because you get called and you die instantly. You have low HP pool, you could just get chopped ultimate by X and you know, you're dead. However, now this also gives you a bonus second in any team fight for any call. Let's go to a, a easier, you know, change. For example, if Storm gets buffed, indirectly every hero that is good against Storm is also buffed. So one example would be Anti Mage. If Storm gets buffed, Anti Mage is also getting a, a buff indirectly, simply because we will be seeing more Storm spirits in our games. Anti-Mage is good versus Storm, so Anti-Mage is going to be picked against Storm. So Anti-Mage is also getting a buff indirectly by that thing. That's another thing that I would like you guys to think about and stuff like that. It's actually really, really important. So for example, right now, I mean not right now, I don't know, this is I believe is latest patch. Uh, Raid King got nerfed a bit. So a lot of heroes that wouldn't really like to play against Raid King, let's say... Uh, faceless Void because he has two lives on Raid King so even if you Chronos here once there's going to be you know full HP afterwards anyway indirectly Void got a buff simply because Raid King is going out of the meta or is actually out of the meta already you know stuff like that it's really, really important to uh, actually understand the patch and you know think about the heroes matchup and in relation the changes in relation to other heroes not just like this. Oh, Course Crown, Shard, Cooldown, Reduce. It's less disabled. Every hero. You know? Stuff like that. So, yeah. That would be the second thing. The third thing would be to have map awareness. And actually think about where the opponents are. And stuff like that. Improving your map awareness. This can be done by multiple, you know, multiple factors. Just think about where the opponents are. Wording better. But mostly, it's having a feeling for the game. Which is, you know, obtainable when you play a lot, obviously. But, uh, yeah, so this would be one example right here. I was playing Brood. I was farming ultra aggressive, sort of, you know, taking their ancients and stealing their ancients. 
and also playing here. So nobody is really showing on the map for the enemy's team. We wanted to sort of rush and we were going to rush. And I knew the opponents were going to contest us because they have a Ravage. So look at what I am doing without having vision of the opponent. I know they were going to smoke. It's kind of obvious. So this is me right now. I don't know where the opponents are. I still don't know where they are. I'm watching there. Then I see one guy, Morphling. Um, so yeah, he's alone there. I'm just pushing, pushing. And then they will obviously the order. They're checking Rosh. I know that they're checking Rosh. So right now, what is going to happen? Either they're going Rosh, which they won't really. They're smoked. I still know they're smoked. I'm expecting a charge on me. I'm 100% expecting this guy to charge me right now. So look at what I am doing. I'm pinging for him. This is exactly what... I mean, I know. It's not that I'm lying. Oh, look at my map movements afterwards. Look at where I am going. I'm expecting to get, like, bashed by, you know, Spirit Breaker right now. Nobody showing. Nobody showing. Look at where I'm going from there. This is just map understanding and actually having a feel for what is going on in the game. What are the opponents doing? Smoking and trying to kill me. Look at them. They were going exactly where I was before. But they still had vision of me, so I could still be farming. As you can see, this guy's tipping me. <laughs> I guess he, you know, realized what happened. So, yeah. This is really, really important. If I die there, the opponents might just go and take a fight with my team. If I was dead, obviously. Even though he, they still went and took a team fight. Um... If I were dead and they would win this team fight, they could easily take Rosh and actually turn the game around and win the game just because of the just because of me dying like an idiot right there. I mean, you know, potentially dying like an idiot right there. But instead what's going to happen is they will still take a fight and I'm going to split push, take a Rex or something like that. So this was all just because I understood map movements and where they were going and what they were trying to accomplish out of it. This is me right now. I couldn't really get there, right? Because I was here. Obviously, I couldn't really TP because my spiders were, you know, available or whatever. They couldn't really traverse all the map. So, I'm taking this tower for full HP almost. This guy is buybacking. Even though, you know, two of my teammates that I made the best out of it. Simply just because I didn't die. And I believe I managed to take this Rex. Or not even, but still, this doesn't heal so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I went out. But because I'm applying pressure here, again, since I didn't die, they're not able to take Rosh. If I were dead, or, you know, not doing anything useful right here, they would be forced to come back into this area, and now we're going to Rosh, I believe, or soon. Either way, it, it, all, it all comes from the fact that... Um, all comes from the fact that I understood to play the map, basically. The fourth tip would be to actually never give up. No matter what, unless maybe all your 40 of your teammates are, you know, giving up. But even then, I'll still probably play. Well, actually, yeah, I'll still play then, most likely. It's simply because you cannot win the game if you've given up. And if you, let's say, manage to go pro or whatever, something like that, and, you know, you start losing, what are you going to do? Give up or what? It doesn't really matter what is happening in the game. You still have to try and actually... Um, actually play the situation if you start giving up whenever the game goes hard one example of pro player would be ltw from nigma right now actually he's giving up a lot in pubs uh, just like yesterday he ruined like three games when shadow amulet and stuff like that but you know that that's another thing so if you just start giving up for no reason and you will never get better simply because when you start losing you don't know what to do you'll just go afk and stuff so let's look at this game they're already like 80%. Four minutes in. Let's keep ahead a bit more. Six minutes in, they're like, what? 90? 90%? 89%? Something like that? Like, uh, look at this. That was like six minutes in. It's seven minutes in. Nine minutes in. It's 12 3. It's going towards, you know, better for us a bit. Then it's six, 16 4. 18 4. They are at, again like 85% chance. Do we give up? No. We don't give up, we continue playing and stuff, and we managed to win the game. Even though my TP was like 1.7 or 1.38 right now. So yeah, it was like 1.8 or something. Yeah, 1.8 as you can see, 0.7 support, 0.4, 1.4, we're not doing that great. 
However, we don't give up at the game. It's going to like 50-50, then they will have the advantage again, but it doesn't really matter. If you had given up at 6 minutes in or something like that, when we're ultra losing, like right here, it's 10-1, Pudge is 3k net worth, highest in the game, super farmed and stuff. We will never win this game, we would have never won the game if we had given up. Yeah, it's 10-1, you know, 2k advantage enemies, we're losing levels most like and everything. But we still managed to win the game. So yeah, just never give up. You won't really be able to actually improve if you give up, as I said before. Oh yeah, it actually says here, I was just approximating, they have 80 something percent. 88 head. So yeah, I actually it was just approximating, I didn't see that. 84, 88, yeah, so just never give up. You won't really improve if you start giving up in the game, or in the games, no matter what point. Even if your teammates give up, you're simply not going to get better because, yeah, you can say, well, I'll play a better game next one. And what if next one is the same with people giving up and stuff like that? You will never get a game where nobody's ruining or nobody's making a mistake. Every single game, there will be mistakes and stuff like that. So you just have to accept them and learn to play around them, even from you, you know, obviously everyone makes mistakes. So yeah, if your teammates would have given up when you made their mistake, you know, you don't really like that, so... Yeah, that would be the fourth thing. The fifth thing would be to just think about the performance of your game. Instead of uh, winning or losing. So, it's just performance instead of result. That would be the fifth thing. Maybe this replay would have been better for the uh, fourth point, you know, never give up. Because look at this game. Again, it's going to be some disastrous shit soon. I had like a uh, AA peak into brute meat and then they swapped and went green meat, but it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, so exactly look at what is going to happen. The opponents are going to get advantage, obviously. So 11 minutes in, they've taken two towers. They're like, I don't know, 86%. This guy is queuing up shadow amulet. This guy's buying a shadow amulet. Obviously, we're not doing that great. This guy is also wasn't really planning to play. So, yeah, this point. Look, this guy was going to amulet. I mean, yeah, this guy's amulet. This guy's amulet. I don't care really. I still continue playing and stuff. So it doesn't really matter the result. It's just about how well you play. Because that is how you improve. If you think, oh, I lost, that must mean that I was doing something wrong. That's not true. This game, I wasn't really doing anything wrong. I was just unfortunate of having Shadow Amulet, you know, teammates and actually giving up 10 minutes in. Obviously, the game is hard and stuff, but uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't really matter what is going to happen in the game. It only matters how well you play. So even if you win, sometimes you win randomly because a Smurf is carrying you or something like that, you know. It just, even though it's sort of hard to uh, assess that, say, oh yeah, I got carried by this guy because he picked Meepo and then went 20-0 or something like that, Brute or, you know, anything. It's just about uh, not caring about winning or losing. It's just about how well you play and how can you improve. So again, look at this, it's still, you know, the opponents are still 86%, Shadow Amulet, and they start to play a bit. And, you know, game goes to 50-50, we end up losing, but, you know, it doesn't really matter, it's just about how well did I play this game? Did I think I could have played better? Uh, yeah, I even noticed what I could have done better uh, earlier. My item should have been a little bit different in this game. Got Mega and stuff. I should have probably went to Blink faster instead of Silver Edge because, yeah, Silver Edge is great versus this guy, but I should really interrupt this guy's ultimate and stuff like that and actually go with Orchid on him because it was kind of difficult to go on him with Silver Edge if they have sentries. Since, you know, this guy's rather amulet doesn't do anything. This guy's, you know, tried to play, but however, it doesn't do anything. Because of, you know, our heroes are just trash. So, yeah. 
this wasn't really my job to go for you know to get a blink and go on them and stuff like that since nobody can really follow up my initiation but either way so this would be sort of the fifth thing i believe or sixth thing next number is actually watching replays of yourself and just seeing your mistakes everyone makes mistakes you can't really uh expect to get better just by playing the game it's simply because when you are playing you usually don't have time to think about i mean obviously you need to think about what you're doing and stuff like that but you're not it's obviously a lot better to see the bigger picture right now for example when i'm watching this game i knew i mean i realized while i was playing the mistake that i made this stuff but it would have been a lot easier if i already knew what i was supposed to do right if i had this exact situation 10 games before and i watched the replay and i actually understood what i was supposed to do it would be it would have been a lot easier to win this game so that's another really important thing to watch the replay and actually assess your mistakes and what you could improve on and stuff like that it's really really important to watch replays even though i wasn't doing it for a long time i mean i'm actually sort of lying right now because i don't really watch replays actually like never it's simply because i can i can assess the game while i play it i know what should have happened and stuff like that so there's no point in really watching the replay because while i'm playing i already know what should have happened better what should have happened worse and what i'm supposed to do this is just one instance i obviously realized while i was playing oh okay i should have went for a blink you know or right when the game was over so i didn't really feel necessary to uh, watch the replay but it's actually really really important to just assess the game and by watching replay i mean that is what usually people do right to just understand what happened and stuff like that and that's why i suggest it if something else works for you such as you know just simply realizing what we're supposed to do like uh, it happens to me uh you should be doing that but you should you should be thinking about what is happening and what should be happening in a game instead of just you know uh, going with the flow for example and just you know following someone else or something like that it's really really important for uh, you to really think about the game even after it's over you know so for example while you're while you're queuing for an next game you could be watching the second I mean you could be watching the game what happened before the previous game that's what I meant so it's really really uh, one thing that you should consider instead of watching a youtube video or something like that you should be trying to watch the previous game and actually see a thing to what you did wrong and then in the next game or the game that you would currently be playing you should try to fix that mistake so let's say in this game i didn't farm enough in the next game i might even pick the same hero and actually just try to farm more if that was the mistakes from previous game obviously this game might be different and you actually can't really farm that much but you still understand the mistake you would understand the mistake so that's really really important to do actually the seventh thing would be to understand timings which is super super important actually so in this game i was playing doom i have my desk i have hood of defiance and now my pkb is coming towards me so this is my timing timing means sort of when you or your team become significantly stronger than the opponent's team right now they have 61 percent you know uh, probability of winning so they're ahead by a little bit even in gold you know it's 23 to 11 so yeah, 62 percent probability to win however right now i became strong the second thing that i want to come sort of online would be my doom and because of this timing that we have I'm actually, look at this, I'm actually able to bait for my team. Two of my teammates are dead. I understand, look at this actually, I understand that my opponents are going to come towards me. I ping there, I saw Tiny, I believe, or he's coming right now. Yeah, so he's coming right now. I linger here. I know that he's coming, right? I could have just went and pushed the wave and run towards the other side. But I know that I'm strong right here because this is our time. I'm very strong because of this BKB and Hood of Defiance, so I'm extremely tanky. Two of my teammates are dead, they're going to come online right now. I mean, they're going to come back to life right now. As you can see, we also have two smokes. So we're trying to 
pressure the opponents with this timing that we have we're actually trying to do something because up until this point as you can see it's 23 to 11 so the opponents were owning us we couldn't really play anywhere on the map because they have a take east and you know mining and stuff like that so it's really really complicated for us to uh actually accomplish anything on the map as you can see they have like the whole map we don't really have anything just like this when i'm drawing with my mouse so we're not really doing anything we haven't taken a tower take this is just mining everything we're not able to do anything however this is the moment where we understand we're actually strong because of this pkb that i have we're actually trying to smoke i believe with my dooms that would be the second thing if your spells come online i see that guy there i could react to bkb here but i don't want to bkb because i want the other opponents that are behind to come and join him in this is exactly why i mean it's sort of a bait but uh yeah it's understanding the timing and actually doing stuff with this timing we just got two kills this hasn't really changed it will right now but i believe we're still going to smoke soon or actually try to take a tower and do something i just keep a bit ahead we're just waiting maybe kb i believe and the blink this is another thing another time i guess we were happy with the kills that we got this would be yeah really important i smoke alone knowing that this is where we're supposed to fight this is our timing this is our time to take a fight so we can actually win the game the game is sort of 50 50 after the bait there so now we smoke i know i'm strong right so obviously i instantly go in get it. win a team fight i just do this guy uh you know, and then we most likely are going to kill them. Yeah. Let's get a triple kill. This guy's also going to die most likely. Yeah, he died. So, because we understood when we are strong, because of my BKB and my Doom. This is what happened. This is the result of our timing. Obviously, the opponents have stuff to do to counteract it. Yeah, it's actually... We had 34% win probability and they had 60 And now it got reversed. This is exactly the same thing. We managed to turn the game around, literally turn it around. Same probability of winning, just because of our time. Understanding what is uh, when we're strong and when the opponents are strong. So it's super, super important to do this, obviously. Because you can get kills and stuff like that. You need to push your advantage. One example of... Uh, actually, no, that would be the sort of the next point. The eighth thing would be hero matchups, to actually understand hero matchups. This game I was playing Aluna, as you can see right here, I was playing against CK. This is the carry matchup. So, this would be what I'm mostly interested in, because we will be... You, we, the carries are usually the uh, heroes of the late game. I mean, not in every case, because, you know, a TA mid would be the same. I mean, yeah, really, really important late game. So, as you can see right here, CK is owning Luna early to mid game i'm almost dying to him i actually didn't expect him to do so much damage i didn't even try to manta the stun is because you know i have a dark willow here i simply thought he would just back away i was actually trying to kill me i have minus 12 armor because i use the mask of madness of course but yeah so by this just simple clip it shows you that they have the advantage in carry matchups towards the late game another thing really important is to understand the uh you know the carry matchup is what can make it turn another way yeah your teammates can in some games in this game it's kind of good to have uh timber saw and you know timber saw lesha because they have aoe damage against ck illusions however ck is in theory really good against luna because he tanks a lot of moon glaives and his teammates won't get affected by my aoe because of this and also eclipse he can tank with illusions and his illusion can still do damage on me we know my teammates with this even if they're like 20 hp or something they're still useful if they don't die so because of that it's really really important to actually understand the carry matchup what can i do to turn this matchup around it's exactly what i'm going to do with my item builds because this would be the only thing to do and also sort of to get the late game in some situation for example if you're CK right here and you see my items oh, i'm gonna go the other way around if i'm luna and i see ck obviously i would want pkb manta to be able to dodge his stun w i mean you know mostly stun and to actually be able to attack the illusion to kill them which is really really important 
can see the opponents are still winning, you know, the, they have like 86% probability to win. The other thing that I'm going to do is buy a butterfly. As we can see, it is very hard for CK to get something that pierces evasion. That's why Terrorblade is pretty good against him also. Because he, even if he buys an MKB, his illusion don't get MKB proc. So they won't be hitting through the evasion. So this is, that's why it's really, really important to understand the carry matchup and actually itemize for them uh, when the timing is right and for the timing that you have. So right, see, right here, we're just turning the game around little by little, which is really, really good for us. So this is where the, uh, my timing is going to come online. This is sort of where it is, the butterfly. Is really really good for me because I don't really care about CK at all right now. Obviously, I'm still okay with farming because my hero Luna gets stronger than CK in the late game. Mid and early game, as I said before, he has the advantage. Major advantage. However, in the late game, Luna usually has the advantage. It's simply because CK is going to itemize for the entire team. Meanwhile, I can itemize just for CK because BKB in this game counters four of their heroes. Ember Spirit is mostly magical damage, Kunkka mostly magical damage, Sky same, Mirana same. So by having one item, uh, one item only to counter four of their teammates, I only have to deal with CK. So that's why in the late game, CK is going to try to deal with all of my teammates because, you know, we have a lot of AoE damage by this guy, by Timbersaw and stuff like that. I only have to deal with CK. So that's why I'm happy to go late game versus a CK as a Luna in this game. Simply because I'm going to get a lot stronger than him. So as you can see with Butterfly BKB, I didn't even pop the BKB and I'm still able to own them all. Two of their cores is dead, this guy most likely going to die right here. So yeah, it's just the Butterfly came into effect there. A lot of damage for me, a lot of damage amplified. Second thing would be, I mean another really really important thing. As I mentioned here, is it itemization and actually understanding what items to buy because I could buy random items, <laughs> right? I could go for a butterfly or I could not buy a big I could go for a hurricane pike. But I understand this is the item that I have to go for. Hurricane pike would be sort of trash in this game because Seeking can pull me back anyway. He, if I'm stunned, I'm still stunned. It doesn't really matter. This guy has an X on Kunkka, chains on Ember Spirit, you know. Uh, he can chase me around with this, so that would be, you know, an itemization part of this. The second thing is, of the itemization part, is going to be, I mean, not really, the second part is sort of the same, understanding the items. But I just want to explain my next choice of items, Satanic. I am sort of the tank in my team, because Leshrog me doesn't really tank that much. Obviously, usually you do however because of his item build he doesn't really have any armor so if he gets stunned by ck he's instantly dead this guy is also having a rough game so he's not really that tanky versus ck especially as you can see he has no armor item this guy's obviously not tanky the supports are not tanky because they have no gold so i am the tank in this game that's why satanic is coming into play another really important thing that uh you could see because of the satanic is that I can tank a lot of the opponent's stuff but the main thing is that they can't stop the satanic from healing me because they don't have enough stuns Mirana has an arrow yeah but he's not 100% chance to hit Ember Spirit has chains doesn't stop me from hitting this guy has no stun doesn't stop me from hitting this guy yeah can have torrent and ghost ship and stuff like that however they don't have enough stuff to stop me from healing with satanic another thing that's really really important to no, take note in this game because you know I can actually utilize the item to its full potential if they had something like a shadow shaman and faceless void and lion and they could just uh, stun lock me for like 20 years you know maybe satan would have been the best maybe Aeon this would have been instead of this uh, satanic so that's why itemization is really really important to um, sort of try to make up for the lack thereof in the hero matchups and stuff like that in the uh, drafting difficulties that you might face so in this game we don't have any stuns sort of like opponents we don't have any catch we don't really have anything 
to get the opponents to stay in one place and actually hit them for me. So as you can see I have a Daedalus queued up. I'm going to go for a Lincoln Sphere afterwards. I'm changing my item build according to what I want to do. Lincoln Sphere I was going to go for here most likely. I mean not really. I was going I'm going to go for a Scotty. Simply because as I mentioned before, I understand the draft. Should be another really really important thing to actually understand the draft. Because we don't have that many disables, how many stun, many slows. Maybe I could say oh Timbersaw has it. This guy maybe has it with this, but he's one second slow with this. Timbersaw can get you know, he's slow, this doesn't slow, the other thing doesn't slow, so it's really important to actually understand and buy the correct items. Scotty, if you feel like you only need to right click the opponents and just be tankier, which is really important in this game, so they don't burst me, so they get a satanic off. Yeah, it's just really, really important to understand itemization on every hero and any, uh, any hero and any role. The tenth thing would be uh, to understand the draft and what you're supposed to do. This is really, really important, especially with higher memoir, when you know games can be won by one mistake. I mean, can be lost by one mistake and one because of the opponent making one mistake. So in this game, I was playing against VP Save. He was playing ET. Um, and I was playing anti mage so the obviously the opponents have two greedy cores in Morphling and Gyrocopter. I actually made a video about this, how to punish them and stuff. Even though I'm playing an anti mage this was one of the ideas in the video that I you can just out farm them because they will split the farming too. So I know that I can win this game in multiple ways. Either I can just AFK hit creeps and win the game that way, or I can actually pressure the opponents, try to pressure the opponents. As you can see, I went raindrops, I went for a stick, I went for a raid man. To win my lane, I'm 3 1 1. Because if this guy doesn't get a good game, if Sankey doesn't get a good game, we will simply be able to run at the opponents. Because Gyrocopter doesn't, you know, enjoy fighting that much, especially with this no rocket barrage build. Morphling doesn't do that well in team fights because, you know, he has more than nice that's about it. So it should be decently easy for us to run at them. Right? Because even though I'm an anti mage, I'm pretty sure I will participate in few engagements. As you can see right here, I'm trying to shut this guy down, to shut his blink down. Because that's the purpose, sort of, that I'm trying to achieve right here. I could be farming somewhere else, right? I could be farming top, the ancients, or whatever, pushing the tower. But I know that if uh, if Sankey doesn't get a fast enough blink, and he doesn't get to actually do stuff, I will win this game because I will have a lot more opportunities to do stuff. First, I will be able to AFK farm. They can't really catch me without uh, sinking blink by surprise. Which, you know, e even like that, I can still counter spell it. So I don't really care about him that much. However, I still want to help my team. By killing this guy over and over again and actually shutting him down, I'm 40 minutes in as a carry just hitting this camp. It, is, it would be unheard of. You, I would be either pressuring top taking this tower like 5 minutes ago in the usual game, farming the enemy's jungle. However, I know that my purpose in this game is to actually shut this guy down. Because I can actually play versus him. I'm maxing counter spell after blink. And I'm actually getting, as I said, I buy, I bought the magic wand on anti mage, so I make it harder for the opponents to actually want to engage with me. Usually I would never buy this on anti mage, because my purpose would be to farm. Right now, after, even after I buy a battle fury, I mean, of, only afterwards I go and hit the ancients. After my job is done. This guy has a blink right now, so the uh, he's you know online sort of because 15 minutes in blink you know he can do stuff with his team. They got a kill, a big kill, a bristleback. It his highest network and stuff, so it's yeah really really important for them to do that. <laughs> um, another thing that it's really important is to understand where you're strong, when you're strong. It would be the thing that I mentioned before in timings. I know I will be strong in, when I have a Manta. Because, you know, anti mage with Manta it's a lot stronger than anti mage without a Manta. So even though we shot this guy down, he just got a triple kill on my teammate. Yeah, just got a uh, triple kill. However, I understand the draft, I understand the game plan with this. In this game, I mean, so I know that I have multiple opportunities to win. Just get a free kill right there. Now I have a Manta. And now I can actually 
fight the opponents with this manta. So this is where my hero sort of comes online. As you can see, instantly when I get a manta, I start running towards the opponent. Because I know that I'm strong. And I know that my game plan after manta, I thought about this, you know, when the game started. As you can see by the network in the opponents, I have like 2k, 2.5k gold more than the hard carry. And like 4k gold above or 4.5k gold above uh, their mid lane or morphing. It's a greedy core. And now if I run at them, what can they do to me? This is sort of what I was going for. This is my game plan. I understand this draft. I know they won't be able to do anything to me if I run into them like this. They're just dying. They just their draft crumbles. They have nothing to do uh, against us. So yeah, we're just going to win this team fight, and then I understand that my draft, I mean our draft, is going to be pretty good at taking rush because we have a blister pack, and he has. Quill spray and Vicious Nerzer go, so we have a lot of damage because of minus armor and Roshan. Being in there, I'll finish in this camp. I'm going to go there. We take it, and now we can push advantage even more. Because I understand the draft. I have Rosh, I bought the. Uh, even though Sanking is still doing stuff, as you can see, even though I shot him down, he's still 7 4 and owning. Just got a triple kill, highest level in the opponents. Imagine if I didn't actually understand that I have to try to shut this guy down. Would have been like level 17, 18 now. Maybe 19, maybe even 20. Because he's still owning, even though he died a lot top and had a pretty late blink. However, I know that I'm still stronger than the whole team combined. So I still try to push my advantage. As you can see, I could be farming because I understand the draft. That, that's all there is to it. I understand that they don't they aren't really able to fight. In no way, shape, or form. They only have magical damage besides like a uh, gyrocopter and this guy but you know morphing has no items gyrocopter i don't really care about him simply because they won't be able to stun lock me and i can play super aggressive as you can see i'm half hp zero mana i'm still here uh, i just got two kills instead of farming this part of the map where you know usually i would be farming if i just want to get a lot of gold however i'm trying to shut out the opponents my item build also is uh changing instead of like buying a scud or something like that i Maybe go for a butterfly. I also I was also thinking about going for an AC. I actually told Bristol back to buy an AC. Simply because they have magical damage. I don't really care about magical damage. He has a hood of defiance. So if they can't really touch us, our two cores, this guy has a glimmer cave. We're sort of dealing. This guy also is going to get a BKB soon. So our draft understanding is really high in this game, obviously. It was like eight point I don't know, something K average. We know that they only have magical damage, besides two heroes. But they don't affect me at all. So if this guy gets an AC, they actually have zero damage to do anything to us. So we can just, like I said, run at them. They have no counterplay. See? Five dead. I'm fighting them with an anti mage, even though I have 60 gold almost. I'm still stronger than them because I understand. I understood what I was supposed to do because of the draft. The 11th tip and last tip that I would like to talk about. It's going to be that you need to be able to win free MMR, right? So that's why I believe every you know player that tries to get better should learn to pick Meepo. I mean, to play Meepo and Brute and stuff like that that can easily win your game, solo win you the game for yourself. So this has like multiple purposes. The first one would be that you're simply gaining MMR. So it's obviously really good to gain MMR because of the quality of the games are going to be higher. So if you're, let's say, 3k MMR and get into a 4k MMR average, you most likely are going to learn thing, uh, things from the 4k MMR players in the game, right? If you're 3k, then you play your 4k players, you might learn, you know, steal the craft or whatever it's called. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Steal their craft. If you're a 3k player playing with a 4k player, you might learn two or three things. If you're a 7k player, you might learn a few things from an 8k player. So if you're able to freely gain MMR by spamming a hero or uh, playing cheese heroes once in a while, whenever you get the opportunity. So in this game, I, you know, Meepo free win. I chose to take the free win, obviously. So, yeah, that, that's, I feel like it's really important if you want to improve, to simply gain MMR by any means necessary. Either spam a hero, or play cheese heroes, or do anything. 
like that in your power to gain MMR. It's simply because the quality of the games are going to get higher. And because of that, you might be able to learn from things from those games. Play with better players. You know, maybe find a future teammate that you want to make a team with, something like that. Either way, it has multiple uh, reasons for doing something like this. So, because of this, I really suggest you either learn a hero very, very well that can solo win a game, or either spam a hero that you really enjoy that you think it's in the meta. And by that, you actually learn concepts about the game that you. Uh, that you're simply maybe not able to because you're only playing uh, because you're playing multiple roles so for example if you play only mid you're also going to be able to think about you know what uh, to do on other roles for example you as a mid laner would like to have a rune at 4 minutes right so you the opponents, you know that you don't like them taking your rune at 4 minutes because you want your bot refilled. So if you're playing a support, some other role, you can actually know what to do. Take their rune at 4 minutes of the enemy's uh, mid laner so their bottle doesn't get refilled. So you can actually learn a lot of stuff from other roles by playing just one role. So for another example, would be if you're playing a position 1 hero, um, and then your you know, you don't like getting ganked. That means whenever you're playing mid, you, you know, you can have a tendency to gank the opponent's carry. Because you know that a carry doesn't like to get ganked early game or something like that. So by playing one singular role or playing uh, spamming heroes or, you know, even picking cheese hero and stuff like that, whatever you can do and manage to gain, uh, to gain MMR, you're obviously going to have higher, um, higher quality games because they're higher MMR so you will simply improve better if you're playing at higher MMR. Thank you for watching the video guys. Have a nice day.